NFL football. Goes to 8-1 and, to win and today. 6 and, and that. Jaden Daniels out of the tents. All the of this so program, Alabama gets a little the payback from last year in Baton Rouge Jackson, Darwin, as they win on their home field. In the entire country. Katie George, where do the coaches and feel the Jackson Dart stands right now? Well, he's got an edge about him this week, Tess. The same kind of edge that he had at the beginning of the season when he wanted to prove that he was the rightful starting quarterback of this program. Lane Kiffin will tell you he has not played his best the last two weekends. He said he got banged up against Arkansas, and he's been a little bit off ever since. The coaches, they challenged him this week to find that hunger again that he had when he was battling Spencer Sanders. I'm told he had a great week of practice. There was a fire, a determination. He is locked in. They expect him to excel this afternoon, Tess. Texas A&M won the toss. They elect to defer. So Ulysses Bentley will be back for the Reds. Randy Bond kicking away for what should be a very interesting Saturday in the Deep South as we are underway from Oxford. And here is Bentley on the return. And Bentley with a decent return making his way out to the 25. All right, you know one of the superstars in the league is the running back Quinshawn Junkins. And last year, Jordan against AM, he was at his very best, 34 carries, 205 yards, a touchdown. And oh, by the way, it was a happy 19th birthday. Proven why he's one of the best running backs in the entire country. He's a bowling ball that gets going downfield when he's got a head of steam. Get out of the way. And again, they expect a lot from Quinshawn Judkins, but if the tough gets going in between the tackles that's where they got to play this game on the perimeter and get it out in space as much as possible had a great visit with Quinshawn yesterday he's very excited for this matchup and this stretch of November critical football dark to pass pumps once takes a shot downfield and that is underthrown incomplete he was looking for Trey Harris the flag does come in at the end at the 37 yard line. Javon Thomas, the true freshman, had coverage. Pass interference on the defense, number 14. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Boy, how about the first play of the game? Leave Ole Miss's best receiver, Trey Harris, wide open. A little tug there. Didn't have safety help over the top. So, like you mentioned, Javon Thomas, true freshman, got in bad position, tried to slow him down a little bit. Easy call for the rest. Thomas out there as a starting corner with Tyreek Chappelle dealing with an injury. Here's Judkins as Judkins able to get about three yards there. And that's right between the tackles again. This is probably if not definitely the best defensive line in the entire country. Five stars littered up front. It's going to be tough sledding for Ole Miss again. Up the middle to start, but I expect them to get the ball in the perimeter quickly. Empty look on second and seven. Dart gets it out quickly and driven back that time. Damani Richardson was there defensively right away against Watkins. What a crucial third down here early in this game. Ole Miss really hasn't got to use that tempo yet, so if they pick up a first down here, I expect them to put their foot on the gas with the tempo and then leads the SEC in total defense statistically they have been superb this year they're down at four short pitch Judkins to the outside look a heck of a play that time by Richardson Boy, Damani Richardson, I mean, it feels like he's been playing for seven or eight years. Does a great job. This is a staple play for this Ole Miss team. Toss into the boundary. Damani does a great job of cutting off the angle of that running back right there. Doesn't bother that he's going to get some traffic in his face. Dayton Wade trying to pick up a block. Damani see that, saw, saw that, excuse me, that concept on tape and was quick to adjust. Ozzin to punt away, sends a spinning knuckler to the 14-yard line to Smith. And good coverage that time against the active career leader in punt return yards in all of college football. So, they started the year with Connor Wigman, who was injured, and now Max Johnson back again. Of course, Max Johnson, his father, a Super Bowl champion, Brad with the Buccaneers. He's got great football family because his uncle's Mark Rick, of course, the former head coach at Georgia and Miami, our colleague at the ACC Network, and Max himself was a starting quarterback elsewhere in the league. 
Had an 8-6 record at LSU before transferring to AM. And he plays like a quarterback that's got football in his DNA, right? Smart with the football, goes through his progressions well. The key for Max today, get the ball out of your hands as quickly as possible with how AM has struggled in protection this year. He has been the starter since week five. Broken bone in the foot for Connor Wigman has him out for the rest of the year. And right away, a good start as he goes to Jade Walker, the six foot four transfer from Grand Valley State. But what I say, get the ball out of your hands quickly, right? When you're struggling as an offensive line, those slants, those in breakers, something I haven't seen a ton of on tape for AM. I love starting the game with an easy throw to the slot and Jade Walker with a big play. Ruben Owens, true freshman, he is tackled for a loss immediately. Shooting the gap that time was Xavier Harris, who didn't play last week against Vandy, and they're glad to have him back. Boy, biggest difference for Ole Miss this year, one of the reasons they're sitting at 7-1 to one with everything in front of them, as we mentioned, was this defensive front. Pete Golding, Lane Kiffin did a great job of bolstering it through the transfer portal. Bunch of new names up there playing at a high level. Second and 12 after the tackle for loss by Harris. Johnson gets it out quickly again, but nothing there. Back to the original line of scrimmage is Ruben Owens. Well, we're about to see how many hotty toddies were flowing in the Grove <laughs> today. I know it's early, but Ole Miss needs this crowd to get into it here on an early third down. I, they go. I assure you that early is no factor in what flows with liquid on the Grove. Third down and 11. Johnson going to check down to Daniels, and Daniels is met immediately. So that Ole Miss defense comes up big with Zamari Walton making the tackle on Amari Daniels. Yeah, nice little chip, just trying to get the ball to Daniels as quickly as possible. Walton sitting in a cover too, so he's got eyes on the quarterback the entire way. Does a great job of not hesitating coming up and hitting Daniels, who's it's a big boy, 5'9, 205. He's thick, but a great job stopping him on third. Nick Constantino is the punter for AM. He's a veteran, but he has been struggling recently. Is able to sky this inside the 20 where the fair catch is made for Watkins. Both defenses doing their job early as we are underway from Oxford. Oxford where you're watching the SEC on ESPN Joe Tessitore Jordan Rogers in for Jesse Palmer and Katie George down on the sideline to see if Lane Kiffin's team can get past this seven and one mark just like they were a year ago second straight year with a seven and one start for the first time since 1962. Dart. Gets it out quickly. It was overthrown to the inside looking for Trey Harris. What's up, Matt Barry? Hello, Joe Tessitore. Happy college football Saturday. It has gotten bad early at the swamp. Already down 7 nothing. Ricky Pierce on the catch. Jalen Braxton's like, you know what? That ball is mine. 14 nothing. Good thing Palmer's not in the booth with you. No, he wouldn't like that score at all, Matt. Dark second down in cutting route and that is complete as he's able to get it to Dayton Wade for a first down Boy, you just felt like Dart needed that all right he's been a little bit off the last couple weeks few inaccuracies you saw that throw just to play a go where he was off to Trey Harris so hitting that slant right in stride that's a confidence booster allows him to get back in tempo Watkins actually lined up in the backfield here on first down pressure on dart balls up in the air and nearly intercepted as the pressure was coming in from Shamar Stewart. Boy get used to this right this defensive front Shamar Turner five sacks on the year he's just going to win with speed on the outside there. And actually Jordan Watkins wide open. Sorry yes yeah, Shamar Stewart there one of the Shamars. Actually had Watkins wide open if the pressure wasn't there. Loaded defensive front 
for a and m Lane Kiffin talking about yesterday how much respect he has for them. More pressure on the feet of Dart as he throws it to the outside on second and ten. So a third and long. DJ Durkin in this AM defense. Remember, DJ had great success here at Ole Miss as Lane's defensive coordinator. Yeah, and he's a guy that mentioned, I got to change all my signs this week. They know me well. I know them well. One thing DJ stressed yesterday is we got to be aggressive on first down. We got to stop the tempo, stop them from picking up yards and getting into the flow and the rhythm of this offense. Jackson Dart just two of five passing for 17 yards, now facing a third and ten. Three man rush, they drop eight. Has time, gets it out, has it complete, and right at that line to gain is Caden Priestcorn. Caden Priestcorn, who really is how they find success in the run game, but they want to use him more as a receiver. Let's yeah. see where they spot this. He completely unlocks this offense. It's going to be really close. It's like they have it a hair short. But when it's lane, that just means it's time to roll the dice as the backup quarterback, Spencer Sanders, checks into the game. Remember fourth down the further review ruling on the field was the runner was short on the first down fourth down is no factor typically in decision making for Lane Kiffin there's 70 percent on the year on fourth down 23 times he's gone for it. Meanwhile a and M we've been lauding this defense they have held opponents to just 31 percent on fourth down. So this is the matchup you feel today where something has to give this offense against this defense. No doubt. And I think this decision if they do go for it tells you a lot about Lane because the analytics don't really kick in to go for it on fourth and one until you pass the 50 in an even game. So actually this would be going against the book as you see Caden Prescorn with the catch right at the sticks. From up here it, it looked like they had a good spot. It looked like he was just a hair short. You see as he's wrestled down to the ground that right knee hitting and the ball turning sideways and we're the ruling on the field is that he went for nine yards and is just short of that line to gain. But this play is under review for the mark. So think about if they roll the dice here and go for it. Yes. Again, I mentioned that's actually against the book. That's against analytics when it's an even game and you're on this side of the 50. Does that not tell you what Lane thinks about this game and having momentum and the magnitude of what this means for where they are in the season? Well, think about all the descriptives that you just used. They have nothing to do with statistical yeah. analysis. It has to do with emotion. It has to do with how much something means. It has to do with momentum of feeling your team out. Uh, Analytics can't account for that. On the field stands, fourth down. So it is fourth down. And Lane is one that uses the book and uses analytics to take emotion out of it. But again, as they trot the offense back on the field up note, J.J. Pagese, defensive lineman, 89, he's in the game. Backup quarterback, number three, Spencer Sanders, also in the game. As well as Jackson Dart, expect some trickery here. Big 89, you see him there. Dead center in that huddle. He's a 315 pound defensive lineman, a former tight end at Auburn, and they love him in spots like this. Here we go. Fourth and one. Look at the big man go. A flag comes in as a road grader went straight ahead against AM. JJ Pagese getting the ball there, the 315 pound local Oxford native who plays defensive line for the Rebs. And Ole Miss saying they think it's on A&M. Lane agrees. The result of the play is a first down. Sideline warning against Texas A&M. Boy, that's not the last we'll see J.J. Pagis. What a weapon on the defensive side of the ball, but came in a couple short yardage plays last week. And this is what you got to worry about. A guy that's not the quarterback making sure everybody's set. At first, I thought might be a false start. It wasn't. How are you going to stop him, Tess? Come on. Oh, good luck with that. And listen, he has good feet. Does. He played kickoff coverage when he was a freshman at over 300 pounds at Auburn. Quickly getting the ball out near midfield is Wade. Josh DeBerry with the tackle. And as we start to see if this passing game can kind of shake the funk, of note, they're about as healthy as they've ever been. Jordan Watkins back last week full speed. As we see Trey Harris getting involved here. Speaking of full speed, how about that tempo to get up and snap the ball and get it to Trey Harris right at that line to gain? Well, they mentioned they want to take those free access throws when they're there to hopefully set up a shot play and soften this defense up. Another first down. 
And this time just struggling to get back to the original line of scrimmage as McKinley Jackson, the defensive tackle, was darting in a year ago against this Ole Miss team. Jackson had 12 tackles. Boy, Lane mentioned directly how tight these linebackers play to the line of scrimmage. Look at these guys. I mean, they are at about one or two yards off the ball there. Everything is designed to stop the run. Dart on second and 12. Has a man and in stride is able to get it to Trey Harris. He beats Sam McCall and a big play for the Reds. 39 yards. I'll try that first play of the game. Got a pass interference that time. Trey Harris won and first and goal. Jumpkins. There it is. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Boy, there we go. What's the word I've been saying? Tempo, right? Get a couple positive plays so the tempo can kick in. And that time, nobody set for AM and and an easy run in for Ole Miss. Aiden Davis, by the way, transfer kicker who played for the Aggies a year ago. And tempo creates results for Ole Miss. They went 11 plays, 81 yards. 39 yards came from this, from the talented Trey Harris. Good pass from Jackson Dart. When John Junkins had a big day last year against the Aggies, off to a good start here. Seven zip Rams. Laura Rutledge and you, I mean, just devouring everything in sight. I ate it all. And I'm not usually a, a, a seafood gumbo kind of guy. Okay. I was last night. How could you not be? While you guys are thinking about your stomach, I'm thinking of Quinchon Junkins' mom. She gets on him worse, guys, than his running backs coach, Kevin Smith, apparently. Junkins says when it comes to pointers and feedback, Mama T is ready with a bulleted list. She is all in. She loves her son, wants him to play his best, and you know she is loving that quick start from her son. Mama T, Tifa. She is always out supporting Quinchon. And what a college football career he is already off to a record setter a year ago with over 1500 yards rushing as a freshman. And flag comes in pre snap. Ball start, 78 on the offense, five yard penalty, first down. Boy, Demetrius Crown over there. They'll rotate that right tackle spot quite a bit. I love this formation though. Anaya Smith there in the backfield, one of their best receivers. Let's see how they use him. Might motion him out of the backfield before the play here. Not uncommon for him to be in the backfield throughout his career. He is the do it all, the Swiss Army knife, and they get him some work here. And Smith finds a lane, gets a cutback, and that is exactly what he can do. He has shiftiness. Yeah, and one of these wrinkles that Bobby Petrino brought to this Jimbo Fisher offense is moving Anaya Smith around, right? He is a Swiss Army knife kind of guy, but in the past, they haven't really used him like that. They're starting to do a little bit more of that. I'd still love some more pre snap motion from this offense, but moving zero around is a great start. 11 yards for Anaya Smith. Johnson, as he is able to get it complete to Noah Thomas. And a first down for AM. and oh, and this has been the story of Max Johnson's season. All right, he's been under pressure more than any quarterback that I've watched tape on and he's done a great job of staying composed and that one finding his big bodied 6'6 receiver Noah Thomas for a good pickup. High formation now as big Ernest Crownover comes in to play fullback in front of Daniels. And nothing there at all. Good run fit that time by Jared Ivey. What's up Matt? All right Tess gonna get you caught up. On Ohio State, Rutgers, Kyle McCord, G. Scott. Right now, 7 nothing, Buck guys. So McCord with the touchdown pass for the now number one ranked team in the country after the new CFP rankings. 
Johnson on second down, setting up the screen to Daniels. Daniels cut down right near the line of scrimmage. That was a good play defensively by Ladarius Tennyson. Boy, interesting of note as well, Tess. Haven't seen Evan Stewart out there yet. Really, they've been their best receiver over the last few years. Moose Muhammad now back in the game, number seven. Evan Stewart, one of the most purely talented receivers in college football. And on a third down, that would normally be their go-to guy. And a timeout is going to be used by Jimbo and the Aggies facing a third down and eight with this revved up Rebs crowd when we return. Unfortunately, Tess, he went through pregame warm-ups and ultimately they decided to call it. He will not play today. He's dealing with a lower leg injury. No Evan Stewart, a big blow for Texas A&M's offense. Especially in a spot like this, third down and eight. Ole Miss showing a gap pressure and another flag comes in pre snap. Zero on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Boy, nice. Smith got a little jumpy there. Had one on one coverage and looked like Ole Miss was going to bring pressure. Probably anticipating that ball coming out quick. And there is Evan Stewart. As Katie just gave us the update the leg injury. Gave it a shot pregame, unable to go. He's over a thousand career receiving yards, dynamic talent, but unable to play today. Third down and 13. What does Max Johnson come up with here? I think he's going to have to get the ball out quick. And that's Anaya Smith in the slot. That would, that's where my eyes would go. Third and 13. Johnson looking over options, drives the ball and could have had it complete to Noah Thomas, but it'll be fourth down. Boy, that time Anaya Smith taking the top off of the defense and Noah Thomas coming in on the in-breaking dig route. This just takes too long to develop. Look at Max is trying to want to let it go, want to let it go. That's still a good ball. Noah Thomas has got to come down with that on a big third down. Constantino on to punt again, the Australian veteran for AM. Jordan Watkins recently had surgery on his hand, fitted with a smaller cast this week as the return man. Off the bounce, he takes it and is wrapped up immediately by Richardson. Of course, the challenge for Jimbo Fisher playing on the road, you've already heard this crowd roaring. And this Aggies team has lost eight straight true road games. As you go back to what happened, it all started against Ole Miss. And this is the reality, the obstacle that has to be overcome this month for AM to have what they would consider a meaningful season. Eight straight true road games they have lost. Brutal, right? I mean, it's just, it's handling adversity. It's everything that comes along with playing on the road. Silent cadence on offense, weathering the storm early as they're in the middle of one right now with Ole Miss up seven and the ball in their hands. Bentley takes the pitch, unable to get to the outside. Well defensed by Josh Berry, the transfer from Boston College. Boy, I tell you what. The emphasis was to get the ball on the perimeter. Texas A&M playing a really good sideline to sideline route right now. Ole Miss having a tough time of it. With the exception of some moments against Miami, right? This defense. Yeah. Very consistent. And they get the sack of Jackson Dart here. A group effort just collectively swarming down with Isaiah Rakes in the middle of it. Well, it's a great level rush, which means they're trying to keep Jackson Dart in the pocket. And then you're going to see none other, none other than Edrin Cooper here shooting the gap late and bringing Jackson Dart down. That's 34 sacks on the year now for DJ Durkin's defense. And incomplete, a three and out. Hudson Wolf, the backup tight end, was the intended target. But this is a very talented and focused Aggies defense for sure. Boy, and a really dangerous throw there by Jackson Dart. Coverage underneath, zone coverage sitting behind his tight end there. 
And that, this pass game just continues to be in a little bit of a funk. Outside the deep throw, which was beautiful to Trey Harris. Hazen to punt again. Smith from the 43, and he is taken down right away. Let's go to the studio to Matt. Yes, you had talked about what a day it is. Our AT&T 5G multi-view keeping you connected around the country. What a Saturday it is. Clemson, Notre Dame. Tigers about to go up, and that we're up 7-3 with the ball. Notre Dame just a special teams mishap. We're tied Arkansas, Florida at 14 apiece. And they got the Gamecocks versus the Gamecocks. Jacksonville State, South Carolina. 14-14, Arkansas, Ooh. Florida already. Johnson, this is what I want to do more of today. He's just getting the ball quickly. It goes to his younger brother, Jake Johnson. And I love so far the plan that Bobby Petrino has. Right, Le'Veon Moss there started in the backfield, motioned out, which softens that defense and allows the slot receiver there or the tight end to have some green grass to attack and picking up yards on first down, getting yourself ahead of the stick so this pass rush can't pin their ears back and come after Max Johnson. Le'Veon Moss in the backfield didn't play last week out injured as Johnson go past midfield John Saunders with the tackle will be third down six yards there but this is this is exactly what you call playing ahead of the sticks right when you're struggling in protection can't get into third downs and five six seven so a nice ball control and then a quarterback run sets you up with a nice easy Short third down and a chance to put together a drive here. Coach Petrino sending in the big Ernest Crown over again with their eye formation look. He's in front of Le'Veon Moss on third down and one. Quarterback sneak with a little help from his friend Crown over pushing straight ahead is Max Johnson for a first down and that's their first third down conversion today. There are his parents, Brad and Nikki. His mom, by, you know all about Brad, Super Bowl winning quarterback, but his mom was a great volleyball player at USF. Pressure straight up the middle off his back foot, floats it downfield, and it falls harmlessly to the ground. But Dejon Anthony Jordan had a real shot at an interception. Boy, it should have been an interception there as Kari Coleman blitz in through the A-gap. You see the linebacker, former TCU transfer 23, shoot the A-gap there. And this is one that, Max, I know you've been under pressure. I know this has been all season, but that ball has got to be out of bounds over everybody's head there can't risk on the road here as we mentioned their struggles on the road can't risk an early turnover there lucky you didn't second and ten Owens just a couple of yards there it'll be third down and long and it was Kari Coleman and Anthony combining on the tackle Boy, and here in the third and long, right? These are these scenarios, and that's what we're paying attention to. This offensive line has really struggled against the blitz, against four-man rush, you name it. So in an obvious passing situation, let's see how Ole Miss and this Pete Golding defense plans to attack this drop back from Max Johnson. They are number four in the country in sacks, number eight in TFLs. Third down and eight, Johnson. Trying to extend the play, checks down to Moss, and Moss is met immediately by DeAndre Prince. Well, I love the plan there by Pete Golding. Didn't bring pressure, showed pressure. Looped J.J. Pegues around to kind of play spy right there. You see 89, not let Max Johnson get outside the pocket. Great coverage on the back end, and stop a really good drive here by AM. Ball at the 41-yard line, but a fourth and seven. They're going to send in Constantino to try to pin them. Jordan Watkins will set up camp at about the nine-yard line. 
Already the third punt of the day for Constantino. Nose down, back rotation, looking for the pin inside the 10. And it goes to the five yard line where Smith hauls it in. Hey, Jordan, let me see what's getting your attention in the weekend lineup that's brought to you by Wendy's Peak. Where do your eyes go on that? Board? Are you kidding? How about let's start right here with Bedlam. Everything on the line for a ranked matchup. Dylan Gabriel upset of Texas early. They've kind of misstepped since then. Can they get back on track? And then how about the former Heisman Trophy winner against the eventual possibly in Michael Penix Jr. at Washington USC. They're starting from their six yard line. Judkins not finding much running room, but getting a very nice push as Edrin Cooper, who's been playing so well, was the first to meet him. Cooper leads the SEC, number two in the nation, with 15 tackles for loss. He's been excellent for DJ Durkin. Yeah, I think it's just adding the athleticism that he already had with the knowledge of this game. So he's not thinking anymore. He's reacting, playing fast, and he's all over the field for this Aggie defense. Second and six run as we will hit triple zeros at the end of the first quarter. As Judkins takes it ahead, he has the lone touchdown here on this glorious day from just beyond the drove. Teams play so far. Well, we got to be a little more cleaner on offense. Give up the drive on defense, and we had a big drop right there on third down. We had the ball going in. We could have got some points, and then we had a third and seven. We could have got four downs, but we didn't make anything up on that. We had a curl, I thought, on the backside. But it's gonna relax and make the plays. Defense is important to get a stop right here inside the 20. Thank you for the time. Thank you. And Jimbo Fisher's defense does have a big opportunity here, Jordan. Yeah, they, they got to start adjusting to this tempo a little bit better, right? On that touchdown run after the long pass, weren't lined up. So communication is paramount once Ole Miss picks up a few yards and getting, gets into that fast rhythm that they like to get into. Third down and four. Jackson Dart, quarterback for Ole Miss, looking things over. DJ Durkin makes his adjustments. Former defensive coordinator here. And they get it complete to Harris. Trey Harris, one of the best receivers in the SEC, will move the chains. Boy. And it's the accuracy there from Dart. Pulled Trey Harris upfield away from the trail defender there. Play action. Look at the time Dart has as he connects to an absolutely wide open dig wave. And look at them run to the line. And watch the motion in the backfield here. Pulling this guard is going to get those guys to suck up. See that linebacker, Edron Cooper there, sucked up to play the run because he saw the pulling guard and he's out of place for that over right behind him. 29 yards and they're already snapping. And Dart having to adjust and then smartly getting it to Judkins. And this is exactly what the options offer up, no matter if the play breaks down or not. And slow to get up is Jackson Dart. Yeah, Jackson took a little hit to the gut there right after he let that ball go. He is hurting. He's going to take a knee. Now, the good news for Ole Miss is that guy is on the roster, Spencer Sanders, one of the most experienced quarterbacks in all of college football. Remember, the former starter at Oklahoma State had 41 starts for the Pokes. Well, you mentioned it. I mean, this is this is what makes Jackson special. But man, took a shoulder right to the gut from Chris Russell. After hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him. And you know, you're a boxing guy. Sometimes you pop right up and then oh, that's when it oh, hits it's, you. It's the delayed paralysis, exactly. the liver shot. We call it hitting the button. But with Dart, you know, you throw the ball and you're exposed like that. And then there goes Russell straight into him. And now Spencer Sanders is now warming up his first year at Ole Miss after being a record setter at Oklahoma State. Remember, four straight bowl appearances, had 30 wins there. Threw for over 9,500 yards in his career. And he was brought in to push Jackson. And, and actually, I think a lot of people thought he might end up being the starter. Obviously, the competition pushed Jackson to really develop and take the next step. But he's a very capable guy. You mentioned over 9,000 passing yards, 67 touchdowns in his career. So they shouldn't miss a ton here with three in the game. 
So Spencer Sanders comes in after Jackson Dart took that big shot. Play to Judkins did go for 10 yards. First down. Judkins, here he goes. Breaking tackles and look at the leg drive right to the end from Q. And Mama T and all his supporters are loving it. Well, the offensive line just paved the way there for Judkins and good to see Dart back in the game so quick. All that experience from Sanders to get the ball to Judkins. Simply <laughs> do that. And it works out well. And as he takes it again and is tackled by Shamar Stewart. Now watch that wash. Guard, center, tackle. Talented AM defensive lineman on the ground and Judkins getting right downhill. I laugh seeing Micah Pettis at 360 Big pounds. Boy. He was literally si sitting on a defender. To the corner. What a play! Touchdown, Rebs! Now, Trey Harris, the 50 50 guy for this offense. You saw the big play on the other side of the field in the first quarter. But he's a big bodied receiver, 6'2, 205, and just goes up over the top of Josh Berry in the corner of the end zone. That, you know what? As a quarterback, God, you love that, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. Throw doesn't have to be right on the money. Number nine is going to make you look good. And think about this drive. Jimbo Fisher just told Katie George, we have such an opportunity to get a stop. They started on the six yard line. They used tempo. They used Judkins. And in the end, even after taking a big hit, Dart threw a dart to Trey Harris, who went up and over Josh DeBerry. And it's a 14 zip on this lead. From where we are here at Vaught Hemingway Stadium, where the home team has a two touchdown advantage. Matt? Okay, Tess, there were some people that ID'd Kansas State maybe on upset of Texas, but CJ Baxter's like, you know what? I mean, it's early, but it's also 17 nothing Texas start of the second quarter after the 54 yard touchdown. Baxter has three carries, three for 61 yards. Of course, it helps when you got a 54 yarder, but Malik Murphy off to 163 yards passing and a touchdown pass as well as Texas is up huge. But right now, what is the answer for Max Johnson and the Aggies offense? Owens catches a seam and then is wrestled down to the 30 yard line. Second five, Owens met at the line immediately. And it was Tennyson again coming up and playing the run. Well, that's the second time Tennyson has been shot out of a cannon down onto that first level. And there's not a bigger play in this game than this third down right here for AM. Get all the stand up defensive linemen. Got to sort out who's coming. Make sure you sure up protection. And timeout is going to be used by AM, their second of this first half. As Jordan said, facing a very big third and four when we return. Collection of um, talent. I mean, I don't know how you collect them much better. So. Congratulations to their group that collected these guys. It's been going back and forth for a long time between Jimbo and Lane right through this week. Third down and four for the Aggies. Johnson over the middle. That was tipped and denied as it was Cedric Johnson in coverage getting a piece of it for the Rebs. 
Well, this is that radar look, right? Everybody's standing up. Cedric Johnson, defensive end, is actually in the middle. He's going to step up, and then he's going to pop back right into coverage, right in the window that Max Johnson is trying to throw that dig route. Almost gets both hands on it. They get a great job by Pete Golding of bluffing the pressure and then dropping back into those windows, trying to change the picture for Max Johnson. And it worked out well. Pass deflected. Constantino sets a punt for the Aggies. And a whistle comes in. Flag. Now the pre snap as there was some movement. False start. Number two on the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Now the back and forth we saw the verbal barbs between Lane and Jimbo that started out with the recruiting class that's now sophomores and then Lane this week was stressing the collection of AM talent the mind blowing collection of talent. And we asked Jimbo about Lane and some of those comments this week he said Lane is Lane I just want to coach my team. Bounces inside the 40 before it goes out of bounds. So a lot of folks were wondering, all right, what would pregame look like when Jimbo Fisher and Lane Kiffin were out on the field? Oh, a little, oh, 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 Jimbo? No, hey, see Lane? Lane's like, hey, hey, buddy. Oh, there we go. I mean, just as awkward as we were hoping it was. Yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> By the way, I love awkward. Oh, it's great. I find awkward to be so good. Oh, it's great. Such good TV. I feel like Lane is just that one friend or that one family member that just kind of rubs you the wrong way to Jimbo. You know, just gets under his skin just enough. Maybe not even trying to overtly, but definitely subtly taking some jabs this week as well. Jimbo said Lane is Lane. He lives in his own world. And right now, that world and this world here. And Oxford is enjoying the score 14 to nothing. And Bentley is met just after a yard. Good pursuit that time by the Aggies with Edgerin Cooper, who leads them in tackles, was just named the co defensive player of the week in the SEC, and he is playing as well as anybody in the league, Jordan. Yeah, DJ Dirk and their deep coordinator just raved about his development between the ears. Always had the athleticism. But now playing so much faster. Second and nine, and in stride is Harris. Had the big touchdown moments ago, and now this for a first down for Ole Miss. I tell you what, at some point, AM's going to have to adjust. They're playing man coverage across the board on the back end, on the outside. Challenging Dart to throw those, and he's been money so far. Dart with time downfield, and in stride is Wade. And that tempo paying off, and Jackson Dart finding his rhythm. What a great little change if I mentioned the man coverage. That time AM steps back into a zone coverage, and Dayton Wade from one side of the field navigating to the other found that green grass. 31 yards, first down just outside the 10. Bentley trying to bounce it to the outside. Bentley flag is down as Bentley gets inside the pylon. But we will check on the flag at the 14 yard line. They should be walking this back. Let's see. Holding number 78 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Yeah, just the right guard, Jeremy James. And it's subtle. This isn't a big, big hole, but it's just enough. You're going to see him right here. And this is the tough part. He's expecting this run to go between the tackles. Bentley bounces and that little tug there as a defensive lineman trying to change direction. And, and that's the difficulty of a back like Bentley is because the play may say go downhill, but he's so shifty, so dynamic that he may bounce it. He makes some big plays like that, but definitely stresses the offensive line. Brings the ball back to the 21 yard line. First down from there. Dart. as he worm burns it inside the five in front of Dayton Wade. And yet another flag. Boy, I don't, I don't know if. Holding number 57 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Yeah, Micah Pettis right tackle. He's going to ride the defensive lineman. Yeah, right there. Just taking LT Overton to the ground. Well, a couple plays ago, he did it legally, right? Almost sat on the guy, took him down that time. There's a 95 pound differential between Ooh. that offensive lineman and that defensive lineman. 
And Overton felt it. There is nothing there on first and 30 back to back big penalties and you know they didn't have a penalty on the day prior to the first of that sequence. Yeah, it almost feels like a night game right when the noise and everything starts yes. getting into some of the procedural issues and your mental focus starts to sway a little bit. Crowd pretty docile right now. Ole Miss hoping to wake him up here soon. But again watch the man to man coverage on the outside. You get man press. Down here at the bottom of your screen. Remember it's second and 28. Dart pressure. And that is incomplete. As Priestcorn was out of bounds. A little more pressure. That time on Dart, that's a heck Ooh, of that's an effort there. I mean, that is close. Watch Priestcorn, the big tight ends. Drag Illegal that leg. Touching. Number 86 on the offense. Penalty is a loss uh. of down at the previous spot. Third down. Well, there you go. No, it doesn't matter anyways, does it? Yeah, I think that left foot as he was backing up, putting his hand up, left foot touched out of bounds. So a great catch all for not. Third down. Over the middle flag is down again as Priest Horn, the intended receiver. Boy. Third Nagora Hills and Fidel Diggs is Outside, jumping. Defense, number 10. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. It's top 10 in the SEC in tackles for a loss, but a little antsy that time. Well, and you get a little frustrated, right? This is a D line that's used to getting after the quarterback, and, and he's thinking third and forever. They got to throw it. This is my chance. Just got to keep those eyes on the ball. Four flags out of our last five plays. It's laundry day in Oxford, huh? Spectacular helmets to learn today, the real tree aquatic pattern helmets. Third down and 23. And Judkins, not much there at all as Stewart was first to get to him. And Caden Davis will trot onto the field. Caden Davis, who played for AM, he was their kickoff specialist in recent years, and now this is his first year. With the Rebels, hit a 56-yarder in Week Two against Tulane. Out of the hold of Charlie Pollock, snap of Jared Lawrence. It's a 41-yard attempt. That ball is blocked, and on the return, here they go. Brought back. That looked like. On the return there. Jacoby Matthews, the defensive back who plays specials. Are you kidding me? What a play by Jacoby Matthews. Boy, we just went over the road record, the road woes for this AM team. You're looking at going down 17 0 in the middle of the second quarter, and now. Feel how that momentum flipped? Shamar Turner with a huge block. And we got a ball game again. How quickly things can turn with special teams. A 68 yard return by Jacoby Matthews. And just when Ole Miss was gaining momentum, and then penalties bring him back, and they got to go with the field goal unit. Here's what happened. And watch Turner just split right through the gap. Get skinny. Whoop. Wow. Unbelievable job. And I mean, just in it right to. But there is nothing you can do. Listen, no. you can talk about ops time and going through it. If Shamar Turner is going to be that good, there is nothing you can do. The six foot four, 290 pounder just destroying that field goal protection. And then Matthews was in the right place at the right time. And 68 yards later, it's a touchdown gap.
And I'll tell you what, Tess, we mentioned how this game for AM was such a swing game for their entire season. From a perception standpoint, from what they can achieve, that play right there felt like a season-defining play, depending on what continues to happen here today. They were going to be down 17-0. If, if listen, where the ball was and what was happening, it felt like it was going to be 21-0. Totally. Penalty flat. So they stop them, then you block the field goal, now it's 14-7. That quick. That's what you got to do on the road when you've been struggling on the road. Weather the storm and find a way to make a momentous play on special teams. Here's Bentley from the end zone. Bentley made that first wave miss and made the most of that kickoff return. Jordan, I can tell you this Texas A&M sideline, they were trying to gain their footing after being punched in the mouth, completely rejuvenated on this sideline after that touchdown. Huge play, huge momentum swing for these guys and their confidence over here. Yeah, it's not just the seven points on the board. It's the energy. I mean, it felt, it felt dead in here for a second. Just before that play, just before the stop by A&M and the block field goal, just a complete game-changing play in the first half here for A&M. Now, that is Sam Matthews, the 12th man, the famed 12th man for A&M, who is down at the end of that kickoff. So the medical team is out to tend to Sam, and we will take a short break with that. A blocked field goal for a touchdown for the Aggies. Miss Rev looks so happy, and it's not all about dried chicken skin surrounding sweet potato treats. No, it's about that hair. God, just jealous over here. Jackson Dart kept his balance somehow. And look at Dart, and that is exactly the physical style of running he can deliver, Jordan. Yeah, it's what he needs to be in this game, right? And that's one thing Lane Kiffin said. He's got to get it done any way he can. They've tried to protect him in the past couple weeks. He got banged up against Arkansas, tried to limit his runs. But today, told Jackson Dart, leave it all out there. We're going to need you to be physical. Play action, man in his face as he gets it off and gets it complete to Harris. That was Shamar Turner who just had the block field goal right in the mug of Jackson Dart. Why and he still did that. This throw, Tess, with Turner all over him. I don't even know how he gets it off, and it was right on the money. That is unbelievable. How about Dart just playing tough, standing in there and delivering, and now Judkins. Just a gain of one. Walter Nolan with the tackle of Q. I mean, you don't get any more accurate than this right here. And again, just the trust. He throws it up to number nine, Trey Harris. He's going to make a play. Second and nine. Quick to the outside. Here he goes. Watkins scoring. What an answer for Ole Miss. Boy, Lane Kiffin always has something up his sleeve, huh? Flag is down at the 12-yard line as David Smith and his SEC crew will talk it over. Rebels offense sometimes just don't blink because they will tear it up right down the field. Result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. They play the try. Wow. So it, we're looking like crazy to see if we can find this, but Jordan Watkins ran off the field like he was subbing out and then just stayed. Right on, I mean, inches on the playing surface. AM lost him, didn't think he was out there, and that is unbelievable. Jacoby Matthews is who the penalty was on. He's the player who now officially, they say, has a 75 yard touchdown return to the block field goal. And here you see the offense staying on the field. 
And as they bring the ball closer, and it's a two point conversion attempt for Ole Miss. They're one of three in these spots this year. They go with the inside screen, and it's not going to get there. As Trey Harris couldn't muscle his way in. But man, oh man, did Jordan Watkins get the best of them moments ago. Boy, snuck out of the huddle, off the field. He's going to be right down here somewhere. Somewhere down there, but look at all these guys. No one sees him over there. None of the defense looking in that direction. Remember that play Johnny Manziel did? Yes. I think it was with Cleveland. Shanahan and I think LaFleur standing there. And they just he wasn't even looking at the play, and then they told him to go. And Lane said, we got it. That's unbelievable. Jordan Watkins was all the way over with his Ole Miss sidelines. Katie? You know, it's amazing. He had two plates put in his hand less than three weeks ago. Had the stitches removed last Saturday after Ole Miss beat Vandy. Tuesday, he was fitted for a smaller cast. He's had less bulk, but still with a decent amount of padding to protect his palm. Watkins says he can still feel some pain when he's out on the field, but it's minimized by the adrenaline. But when he's done playing, it gets pretty sore the following day, so they're still trying to manage that. But it's just impressive, the dedication to be out on the field, having surgery less than three weeks ago, guys. Well, Katie, he has more adrenaline rushing through him right now after that play. That was so well done as he just walked his way over to the sideline and standing near his coaching staff a and m doesn't see it and he's wide open to go right in for the touchdown that's one of those plays you have in practice for a really long time and you're just like i don't think we're ever going to run this probably not and then all of a sudden <laughs> lane pulls it out in one of the biggest games of the year and now a and m back down two scores they got to find a way to answer here before halftime Just when they cut it to a touchdown. A blocked field goal. And now back to offense with Max Johnson, who's drifting back and goes underneath to Moose Muhammad. And that's just one that Max has got to get out earlier, right? You see, Moose catches that, but then he's got his back to the defense. He's not able to catch it on the run and keep going. If Max gets that out of his hand a second earlier, Moose can maybe turn upfield and try to make something, to make something happen. Here's Daniels on second and six. He lowers the shoulder and takes it ahead to the 40-yard line for a first down. Boy, and then there you start to feel them settle in, right? Need to pick up that first first down here. Amari Daniels, big physical back, obviously with Le'Veon Moss, still not quite 100%. Get downhill for the first down. Passant is the right tackle, did a very nice job. Play action, Johnson on first down, trying to find any option, and finally is able to do so to Moose again, the son of the two-time Pro Bowler, Moussin Muhammad. So 11 yards on the completion there. Johnson, man coming straight at him, Pagis, and he will choose to throw it away. Just, just this is one of the issues. Watch the slide protection here. Watch the Ole Miss guys just standing around. Watch in the middle there. There's three guys standing there blocking one. It's part of the issue. They, they just have not been able to be consistent up front as a &M tries to take a shot there. Jordan, this is their longest drive of the game, and it's only 26 yards. And taken down by Pagis, the big man in the backfield. They've got to find something offensively. Well, and you're starting to see just how much they're missing Evan Stewart, right? He, he's their deep shot guy. He's their one-on-one -on -one matchup. And really trying to scheme every single play for Anaya Smith makes it really tough on Bobby Petrino. Time head coach, now the play caller for Jimbo Fisher. And finally gave way with those duties this year. Third down and 13. That stand up look again that gave AM issues last time. 
They back off with two into coverage off of it. Third and 13 and complete for a first down to Walker. And you see Johnson took the hit at the end of that. Boy, such a good throw under pressure. Again, protection issue with that radar look. That is a huge pickup right there. 17 yards and a first down for the Aggies. Four minutes until halftime. Moss. He is back today. Injured his hamstring in the game against Tennessee. Lingering injury. Really a credit to Pete Goldie and this defense for how they're playing, how physical they are. I mentioned completely changed, not just the scheme, right? They're more of a three down front. They're physical. The transfers up front they have are playing at a high level. It's been tough for AM all day. Second and six. Moss again. That was well blocked and a first down for the Aggies. Boy, and here you go. You're starting to see there's issue, and you're starting to see the run game hit a little bit. Big opportunity to get on the board here for Texas A&M close into this lead. Remember, they get the ball to start the second half. Johnson going to the end zone. And there's no flag as Smith was covered by Walt. Like well, Evan Stewart yeah. mentioned it spots like this. It just feels like an is, is their only go to right yes. now. And, and I don't know if I buy that. Moose Muhammad, number seven, really good receiver. Love to see Noah Thomas, the 6 6 target at the top of your screen. Get a few jump ball or deep ball opportunities as well. There's other guys that can make plays for this AM offense. Second and ten, Johnson, quick out, able to get it complete, and then Thomas made a couple guys miss before then being wrestled, but he's inside the 20-yard line. There he is, right? That's that name, 6'6", six, six, big-bodied receiver, talented young receiver. Just picking up enough to make this a manageable third down. Lumpen just a little bit trying to shake out that leg, third down and four. Thomas, six foot six, big tone center when he's at his best. And he's going to walk off, favoring that leg. First time in the red zone today for AM, and now facing a third and four, and this atmosphere on the road. Johnson, with time, gets the ball out quickly and is able to get it complete as he goes to Jade Walker, whose helmet comes off at the end of that play. Really great throw here, TJ Young. Right in tight coverage here. Watch this. Got a miss on the outside. Tight coverage inside. Big time throw there by Max Johnson. Quieting the crowd by way of that reception. 12th play of the drive. And a first down for the Aggies. The longest drive of this SEC afternoon. Moss. Look at the space and into the end zone, Le'Veon Moss. That offensive line coached by Steve Adazio just created a big lane for Moss. Watch the lateral movement by this offensive line. This is a stretch play outside zone. Everybody's going to be moving this way. And Cedric Johnson backside, he's got to close a little bit more. Watch how hesitant he is. That's what opens up that big cutback lane. Because it's not a zone read situation where he's got to worry about the quarterback, he's got to close that down and make that tackle. That was a critical, well-managed drive to answer. 12 plays, 75 yards, played some physical football. And then it's good to have number eight back in the mix. 20 to 14. AM had four drives for 59 yards. Then they just went 12 plays for 75 yards, Jordan. It was the run game, right? They got things going up front. Le'Veon Moss, big run as well. But the offensive line, talk about how poor they've been in protection at times. They got physical. 
there where Ole Miss had been dominating the line of scrimmage for most of that first half. Inside the five yard line. And let's go to the studio to Matt. All right, Joe Tess, Lexus Halftime Report. It is a statement Saturday across college football. Right now, Rutgers is doing that against Ohio State. So is Texas against Kansas State. We'll get you set for Alabama LSU tonight. What a day in college football. Dan Mullen, Joey Galloway join me coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report. Look forward to that. As there was a flag down at the end of that, the reserve running back who plays up in special teams, Matt Jones, was on the return. The flag came down at the end. Kiffin year number four at Ole Miss after the three seasons at Florida Atlantic. And now a team that sits here at seven and one. Seven and one was the struggle point last year for Kiffin's team. Seven and one all of a sudden you saw them eight and four then you saw them lose the bowl game to Texas Tech. Trying to avoid that here. Up six. Get it out quickly to Watkins. You can't find anything going upfield. Bryce Anderson, a good tackle there. Opportunity for the defense as this clock continues to count down. Before we will get you to Matt, Joey, and Dan in the studio. Well, I think about the way that the complexion of this game could change, right? If AM gets to the half just down six, they get the ball after half as well. Right. They got a chance to take the lead on their first drive. If they hold tight here and force a punt at Ole Miss. Judkins. And this will be third and about three after that run by Judkins, who had a touchdown run to start our day. And there's the timeout from, from AM. See if they can at least force Ole Miss to punt him the ball. Coming up tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown with coverage from Philly. The big NFC East matchup between Dallas and Philadelphia. All access with Micah Parsons and Jamar Chase. That's 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And then Monday Night Football is Chargers and Jets from MetLife. That's 8 Eastern on ABC. Peyton and Eli are on ESPN, too. Of course, you can't come here to Oxford without that name Manning being everywhere. You look, you know the speed limit is 18 miles per hour on campus. We should have worn a couple quarter zips just, you know, yeah, exactly. to honor them. Right. Yeah. We'd have been sweating our butts off even Boy, more. It, it is hot up. There is the 18. <laughs> that is also the speed limit on campus. So off the timeout, looking for the stop on third down. DJ Durkin's defense. Jackson Dart, a couple of touchdown passes in this first half. Third and two, Judkins probing, met, bounced, and then tackled. He was sent back, and then eventually Bryce Anderson cleaned it up. But Shamar Turner was the first into the backfield against Quinshawn Judkins. I mean, how many times are we going to call Shamar's name? Watch him just fly off the edge here. Meet Caden Prescorn in the hole, said, no, I'm going to get number four. At least threw Quinshawn off his track, and then the rest of the defensive line able to clean that one up. But... The blocked field goal, a number of opportunities in the backfield blowing things up for this defense. Turner is all over the place today. The blocked field goal is the play of the game. Totally. Right now. You do not have anything that looks like a six-point game if it's uh, not for Shamar Turner beating his man so badly, splitting the gap and getting into the face of the kicker. And that was returned 75 yards for a touchdown and without that who knows where this game goes I don't think people understand how hard that is to do oh most time you see a quick guy coming off the edge maybe someone didn't reach out far enough but have a 6'4 290 pound guy just get skinny hop a gap I mean that's uh, the athleticism they're unbelievable and you have 1.3 seconds yes. to do it that's yes. what people don't realize the operation at the longest time. right the yeah. operation time that with you have to do that within yes 1.3 seconds and if you don't you can't get to it so Mazen punting out of the end zone and a fair catch at around the 43 yard line and that is how things will close out Jimbo and Lane. That got all the attention in the lead up to this one. The verbal barbs back and forth. Number 10 team in the country at home. 
against this loaded roster of AM trying to overcome the road woes. Katie. Thanks, Tess. Lane, how did AM regain its footing there in the second quarter? Well, we gave it to them. I mean, they made a good block on the play, but that's a 10 point play. We're kicking a field goal and instead give them momentum and they score seven points the other way after a touchdown call back for a holding. So that's on us. Coming into this game, you wondered if Tempo could neutralize talent. What do you think so far? I think so far, outside of a 10 point play, or it's a 16 point game. So we got to go in, regroup. This will be a four quarter game. Thank you. Tempo is ahead of talent, 20 to 14 right now, as we get you to the studio for our halftime report with the esteemed Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and coach Dan Mullen. Gentlemen. 20 to 14. Jackson Dart has himself a couple of touchdown passes. Joe Tessitore and Jordan Rogers with you. Ole Miss has six plays over 20 yards. They've had the big plays. AM doesn't have a single play, except they blocked a field goal and returned it 75 yards. And without that, who knows where it would be? Did that not change the c complexion of the game just entirely? Right? AM couldn't get anything going that first half. That sparked a little bit of offense at the end of the half, and that sets up what's going to be a really good second half when AM gets the ball. Ah, the end of the half, that drive by AM as your road test is brought to you. By Goodyear. Well, Max Johnson started getting some things going through the air, finding Jade Walker a couple times over the middle to start the drive again on a big third down, tight window throw on the outside. Great accuracy there, finding Walker again and Le'Veon Moss, little banged up, hasn't been 100%, but capped off that drive with a touchdown. And now we got a ball game. Only 134 total yards for the Aggies, but a huge opportunity to start this second half. 59 before that drive. Guys, I spoke with Jimbo Fisher coming out at halftime. He said defensively, we have to impact the quarterback better and win on the one-on-one -on -one goal ball routes. He said we have to be better defensively on those routes in particular. He said on offense, we have to finish drives. They've struggled with that the past few weeks, especially in the second half. He said, if we score right here on this drive to open things up, we're back in control of this thing. You can bold and underline, especially in the second half. For the last month, it has been a field goal fest for a and when it comes to second half scoring. Will they change things here in this second half on the road? Le'Veon Moss able to get around the edge before he's dragged down. But for the past month, it has been the constant struggle of finding the end zone in the second halves of games. Yeah, it's been consistency, right? And I think the run game is what needs to get going because you go four straight games without scoring an offense TD in the second half, you're not going to win many ball games. You're definitely not going to win one today if that happens. Love what they're doing here with the outside zone, that stretch play. Worked for the touchdown before half, worked again there on a big first down to get yourself in a better second down situation. Two tight ends on the left side of that line on second and seven. Johnson with the protection gets the ball out quickly and Smith keeping his balance and the ball comes out at the end but he falls on it. Anaya Smith but that wiggle that he has just to get the extra yardage. Oh, he's so talented just get him in space is all Bobby Petrino is trying to do nearly every single play find green grass for him. This is what he does when he gets it in his hands. Goes from maybe a third and short to picking up that first down there and luckily he held on to it there. 11 yards for Smith. Moss. Unable to use that block in front of him from Max Bright. Next games up are brought to you by Cracker Barrel. Reminder ABC. Good stretch of ball between Bedlam and then number five Washington against USC. Boy, how quickly the college football playoff picture could shake up depending on what happens tonight with Washington, right? Pac-12, a lot of competition there. Oregon biting on the heels of Washington as well. And USC with a former Heisman Trophy winner just sitting there. And this game, this game yeah. right here impacts the college football playoff. There are unique scenarios involving Ole Miss. Second and eight, Johnson with time. And he goes right to that line to gain to Muhammad. But you just start to wonder, with no Evan Stewart, who's the shot guy for this offense, right? A lot of good ball control right now, and they need that. Get the running game going, start chipping away in the passing game, get the ball out of Max Johnson's hand. But at some point, you're going to have to max protect, and you're going to have to take a shot. 
Is that Noah Thomas, number three? Is it Anaya Smith? Both at the top of your screen right now. They go inside with Daniels as Daniels is able to cross midfield. Short gain there, tackled by Joshua Harris. There's Bobby Petrino, of course, the longtime head coach of the Falcons, Arkansas, Louisville, most recently was out Southwest Missouri State. Second and seven. Johnson. Has the protection, goes downfield. You were asking who would be the downfield target. He was looking for Smith. It was low into the outside. Coverage by John Saunders. Yeah, great coverage by Saunders. This is the matchup they want. They want to get Anaya Smith in the slot, and you see him. He pointed up there. He's telling Max Johnson, I want you to throw that up with more air. Let me go up and make a jump ball play. Max tried to put that on the back shoulder, and a tight window to try to fit it in 35 yards down the field. Third down and seven. Both teams have had their struggles converting. Max Johnson. First drive of the second half. Looking for points. And gets it in the form of Thomas. First down, Aggies. Well, what was the other name I said, right? Noah Thomas. 6-6, big target. I love this. Post route takes the safeties out of the equation. You got Thomas coming from that slot position on the left side. Deep over route. Running through physical coverage there by John Saunders. And it's a ball. I mean, it's a heck of a ball by Max Johnson. Right at the face mask of the big target. Remember moments ago, I said they didn't have a play over 20 yards in that first there half. Go. There's 21 yards, the kind of play they need. Moss finding very little against the interior of that defensive line, clogged up by Jamon Gordon. Big Jared Ivey and Seth Johnson. Ivy had a great game last week against Vandy. Had two and a half sacks for the Reds. Second and seven. And he's been a little quiet so far. Working on the right side of that offensive line. Basantis, the true freshman at right tackle that struggled a little bit this year, but holding up well so far. We'll also go ahead for three and a half yards. It'll be third down and manageable from there. Sistrunk with the tackle for Ole Miss. The Strong's helmet came up. He's going to take the job. Another third down for AM. Nine play drive to this point to open up the second half. Pete Golding, his defense, looking for a stop. Does he send him against Max Johnson? They get the ball out quickly and it works out well as Anaya Smith has the first down pending the flag at the end of the play. Pass interference on the offense, number seven. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Moose Muhammad clearing things, Jordan? Yeah, just trying to run a little rub route. Man. This is physical play at the line of scrimmage from the DB as well. I don't, I don't. Is it the extending of the right arm at that moment? It is, but again, I, I would just argue, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a little contact there, but I feel like that happens a ton. I don't think he was overtly trying to screen or hold the guy, you know. That's a tough call. It is, and it wipes out what would have been an Aggies first down. 15-yard penalty makes it a third and 19. What a swing that is. From a first down, and you're marching towards the score to now third and 19. Johnson chased back, and he's just got to launch this thing away. So that penalty on Moose Muhammad as another flag comes in. This back at the 17-yard line. And Moose Muhammad, one of those guys, thrust into a bigger role with Evan Stewart out. Had over 600 yards last year, was a big part of the offense, but... His playing time has decreased steadily with Anias this year. On the defense, number five. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 
What do you that use? helps Nevada or Mac or what's what's the makeup of choice? What do you mean? Things made up here with the calls back. That's to back. crazy. Ball never lies, huh? No. We used to say that in the front yard playing hoops. Boy, all evens out at the end. Yeah. And that worked out one way, and you give it back the other. Let's pretend those last couple plays didn't happen. That's here right. We go. First down for the Aggies. Moss off the right side takes the hit and keeps his footing as he works his way to the 12 yard line. Boy, and this is what they were missing. This is what Jimbo Fisher said specifically yesterday with Moss back, you get the yards after the contact. Watch the impact here. Dejon Anthony coming downhill with a big hit, but Moss at six foot 210. That's what he's so good at, just bouncing off those tackles, picking up one or two extra yards every time. And staying ahead of schedule, second and one. It's a long, sustained drive to open up the second half. Daniels, he is inside the 10 and fighting his way to the five-yard line. So it's first and goal, Texas A&M. You know, guys, it's really impressive. Le'Veon Moss, he's been coming off between plays in a lot of pain. So he's fighting through his injury coming back from. They brought him out of the locker room early to kind of warm him back up. But, I mean, he's laying out some really nice runs fighting through his injury here. He has come up big, averaging 5.6 per carry. First and goal. Play action to the end zone. That ball is intercepted. John Saunders. Johnson. He was looking for Anaya Smith. The long drive where they attempted to take the lead and instead this John Saunders and that Rebels defense deny the Aggies the first turnover of the game. And then he throws the interception in the end zone. And now Jackson Dart and the Rebels as he is being chased and was nearly tripped up and then just had to throw it away outside the tackle box. Yeah, just a little stock and go here by Nia Smith. He's going to sell blocking. The lane mark for that, the quarterback and the receiver, is the goalpost. Max Johnson threw that too far upfield. And Nia is thinking it goes to the goalpost. Exactly what Jimbo said right there. If you're going to miss anywhere, you miss throwing it through the goalpost, essentially, if it's tightly covered. Just can't miss there in man coverage upfield. Receiver's never going to be there. Boy, and that looked the part of the Aggies taking the lead and getting the drive they wanted to open up the second half. Wide open is Priestcorn. The big tight end with the reception from Jackson Dart. As they just lost him 23 yards. Boy, how does he get wide open, right? Well, because Prescorn is the guy that blocks on the outside for those receivers, blocks in the box as well. And that's what Charlie Weiss Jr. off the corner said. We want to get him more involved in the pass game because he can make plays like that. Play action, dart, a lot of time, downfield, and into the hands of Trey Harris. Boy, just the second, third, maybe fourth time that Trey Harris has just absolutely won at the line of scrimmage. Working on Sam McCall there, the DB. Ball a little underthrown, but what a play. Judkins looking to wiggle his way free, but can't find much against York and Cooper. And flag comes in at the end. So big Micah Pettis down on the ground. Look at Jackson Dart and this team. They are rallying everybody here at Vaught Hemingway, just having a hype moment. Personal foul, number five on the defense. 
A flagrant personal foul requires an ejection from the game. Number five is ejected for the remainder of the game. That's a huge loss. That's Shamar Turner. As he is ejected from the game. Shamar Turner, who has been disruptive today, who had the blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown for the Aggies. He's been the best player on defense today by far for AM. So a huge penalty. Not just in momentum, not just in yards, but like you said, Turner out. And that's the emotion of this game. We talked about it, right? A swing game for AM. Their season teetering on the edge. Ole Miss. Everything in front of them. Georgia next week. This game's so monumental. You can tell the emotions are getting into this game. But those are the plays that you can't have after the whistle. And that makes a first and goal. And here's Q. Patient and then in. Flip, flam, bim, bam. Reps touchdown. How many times has this game been teetering in either direction, right? The field goal from Ole Miss that gets blocked. Looked like they were going to run away with the first half. AM back in it. Now the interception when AM looked like they were going to score and go ahead on their opening drive in the second half. And now back to a two score game as Ole Miss answers. Those swings, those critical moments, as Lane said, hey, we had a 10 point play. Go against us. Well, we may have just had a 14 point sequence. Yes. Think about how that game has changed if Max just throws that to the landmark and they punch it in there 21 20. Instead, Ole Miss answers emphatically. A six yard touchdown run by Judkins, his second of the game. Had a big day against AM last year and now trying to make it. A 14 point margin as Lane Kiffin goes for two. Judkins swings out of the backfield, dart to the end zone, and they get it so easily to a wide open Trey Harris. And a big punch pump from Coach Kiffin opposite his rival Jimbo Fisher. Those swing moments, those big sequences. The Aggies had the long drive. Max Johnson made the mistake. John Saunders had the interception. And then it only took a minute 10. Capped by Judkins straight ahead into the end zone. Cap it with the two point conversion. And it is 28 to 14. And a lot of love from Lane. Oh, look, Micah Pettis has been finishing blocks like this all game. And watch Turner get up with the frustration that <laughs> it's oh, right there. Whoa. And another one. And he goes Out right across up top. Get, break that down. Well, I mean, that was like in Ghana last week in yeah. Saudi Arabia with that shot. But the first shot, I mean, you just can't. His grandchildren are going to lose a point in that round, though, right? Wow. So he is ejected with the flagrant and one of the very best players out of the game. The guy who earlier today had the play of the game for AM with the blocked field goal that was returned for a 75 yard touchdown. Yeah, Jimbo's got to be able to settle his group down, right? The emotions of that sequence of the interception in the end zone, giving up the long drive, long touchdown. You got to settle these guys back in because it's still middle of the third quarter. It is a two score game, but. This game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. The implications for both teams are still massive. Max Johnson needs to put together a drive here. Well, he just put together a drive, but then made one mistake at the end, the interception in the end zone. And now here's the quick game that they want to get going as Moss goes ahead for a game of two and a half. Well, guys, emotions are high on this Texas A&M sideline. Jimbo Fisher and Max Johnson had an animated exchange after the interception. Jordan, you nailed it. Jimbo said you have to feel it and get the ball out quicker. Johnson said he didn't have the time. After some back and forth, Jimbo said, calm down. It's done. Get your mind right. We need you to get us back in this game now. Yeah, and, and right, there's not going to be a right answer. Did he feel a little rushed? Yes. Should he still have missed in the right spot towards the middle of the field? Yes. But forget about it. Move on. Can't dwell on it now. Well, this helps to move on. Le'Veon Moss with a first down. And you can see he is in pain as he grabbed at his right knee at the end of that play. Moss was out injured recently with a hamstring, and now he's writhing in pain. The guy they have been leaning on in that backfield 
is in pain as the medical team is out to see him, and they're right on top of that right leg. Jordan Rogers, Katie George, and Aflac, their trivia question. Since 2017, which quarterbacks have started for more than one SEC team? We have one in front of us here. Max Johnson, of course, was the starter for LSU back in 2021, and now a first down for Texas A&M. So think about that, Mr. Rogers. I got one. Play action. Johnson, they're closing on him, but he gets it complete, and Smith keeps his balance, and in the open field, he's so dangerous. Anaya Smith inside the 40. All you got to do is give him a chance. Boy, it almost seems like every big play, Max Johnson is falling away, right? Pressure in his face, a heck of a throw here to find Anaya Smith, and again, when you get him the ball, good things happen. So good run after the catch, huge play for A&M. An Ole Miss defensive lineman. It is down at the end of that play. It's either Ukwu or. Yeah, that's Isaac Ukwu. Transfer from JMU. He had a great career there before coming over here to Oxford. He's not putting much weight on that right leg. Oh, yeah, a little. Just one of those many transfers, nine first year transfers on that two deep for Pete Golding. Should we answer Affleck? Speaking of Max Johnson, yeah, well, I mean, listen, transfers is the reason why this list will just grow more and more, right? So quarterbacks who have started for more than one SEC team. I'll see I had Mike Wright, Vandy guy. Obviously I forgot Felipe Franks, Florida and Arkansas. TJ Fenley, Auburn LSU. Daniels able to find something on the right side. That's a good run by Amari Daniels. The junior from Miami Central High School. He's so compact, but tough, good hard runner. First down for AM and listen, they had the good long drive that finished with Max Johnson interception. Now another nice drive to respond after Ole Miss scored to push it to 14 points. Johnson. The lefty looking for something, and he finds it. It's his brother. Johnson to Johnson. Jake Johnson, touchdown. And the family loves that. Nikki and Brad rooting on their sons. They made SC, they made Texas A&M history as the only brothers to throw and catch combo a touchdown earlier this year. And now they do that at a critical time to bring it back to one possession as Bond adds the extra point. And they did it in under two minutes. A 28-yard touchdown catch by Jake Johnson. Well, this is the effect that running the football has on you. John Saunders, or excuse me, Trey Washington going to roll down into the box. And he's going to be in coverage right here. Look, he's on Johnson, but then he sees this over route coming, peels off of Johnson. Max pumps it, finds his brother wide open. But again, when you run the football, you force out of zone coverage, out of two high shells, into one high shells, and that's the effect the play action can start to have and find those openings for AM. and There is Nikki. Max and Jake's mom. That is her now, nice and calm, excited, saying that a boy. But meanwhile, this was after the interception. And there is nothing like being a uh, football parent. Oh my gosh. Feeling I feel helpless. for my mom after this sit in the stands, go through the roller coaster of emotions. I mean, throwing a pick or not sliding when I should have slid. I mean, bless it. Bless every mom out there that sits in the stands and watches their baby out there playing a physical sport. And remember the conversation that Katie was detailing of coach and quarterback. 
and said, okay, that's in the rear view mirror. And now you get to Attaboy. That's a good coaching moment that Katie was detailing, and you see the results. And dynamic relationship between Max and Jake. Yeah, how about a connection? Obviously, their dad, a quarterback, so football was in their family really young. And, I mean, what brothers haven't taken a photo like that before? I probably got five or six of them in high school, got a chance to play together, and then now linking up in the SEC. Not many things more special than that, huh? And here's the touchdown moments ago. Jake was the top tight end recruit in the country when he came out of high school in Athens, Georgia, that famous football family. And a start, we will get it quickly to Trey Harris. Well, we talked about the cause and effect that the run game had on the play action for A&M. How about the deep shots that Ole Miss has been able to hit, and now you see A&M giving a lot of cushion at the line of scrimmage, not playing that press man anymore. Here is Bentley, who lined up out of the backfield as they try to get some blockers in front. And those deep shots have really been the difference for this offense. One of the things Charlie Weiss, junior ops coordinator, mentioned is that we've just struggled on those, right? Dart's just been a little bit off tonight. No chance. He's been on the money. They go direct snap to Bentley on third and one. As that mark will give them the first down. They go with that tight formation and then the direct snap. You were mentioning the downfield passing of Jackson Dart. How about that? Five of five on 20 plus. More than he's had in the last five games on those deep shots. And that, that's the staple of a Lane Kiffin offense. And here we go. Play action. And that is a good effort on the ball by Jordan Watkins for another first down for the Rebels. But you know, this is an, an offense in Lane Kiffin that everyone thinks is high flying, throw it all over the field. No, it starts with the run. And when the run starts to hit and those yards start to come, that's when the play action and the shots come. Eleven yards to Watkins. Bentley. Made the first man miss, broke a tackle, breaks another, and moves the chains again. Ulysses Bentley, who was a huge addition a year ago, then wasn't healthy coming over from SMU, and now showing you what he's all about. He's such a great one-two punch from the Judkins that gets going downhill. Quinshawn back in the game now, and Bentley a little more side to side. Quick game being put to use. Watkins on the outside, and Watkins able to dart ahead inside the 35-yard line against this excellent AM defense that leads the SEC in total defense, leads in sacks and TFLs. Judkins getting free. Here goes Q. Look at him with that leg drive as finally Jacoby Matthews has to spin him down, but not until he gets to the 16, and a flag is down back at the 29. Oh, Ole Miss fans not going to be happy about that one. Holding number 86 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. Boy, that's Caden Prescorn. He's going to come from the right side of the line of scrimmage all the way across to loop for this outside backer. Right there, 86 comes in the frame. Working on Torian York and just... Oh, man. I guess I'm just against flags today, you know? In general, on the offense. Shocker from a quarterback, huh? I don't know. That, that, one, that one was uh, minimal. And not good news for a and as slow to get up and you see the medical staff with Sam McCall and that is a position where they cannot get thinned out Tyreek Chappelle is injured and now Sam McCall struggling to the sideline let's go to the studio to Matt all right, Joe Tessitore, there were signs of an upset early on for the Buckeyes, but then Travion Henderson punches it in. 21-9 now, end of the third quarter. So they can lean on Henderson. He is 84 yards and the touchdown. 21-9 for the number one team in the country, according to the new CFP rankings that were just revealed on Tuesday night. That's the fourth time that Ole Miss has been called for holding. 
That is Javon Thomas, the true freshman, now in at cornerback as Sam McCall was taken out. Dart backed up to midfield and has to toss it away as things were collapsing on him. Harris was seemingly his only option. Yeah, Torian York, linebacker who just was a part of that holding call, blitzed straight up the middle, one on one with Quinshawn Judkins and DJ Durkin spoke directly about how important he he was Tory in York to this defense makes all the calls as a true freshman not something he's really ever been around a guy that makes all those defensive calls that young says he's a calming force how many times you ever say that about a yeah. true freshman in the SEC especially in a game where tempo is crazy as Ole Miss always is third down and nine Three man rush drop eight against Dart who goes downfield and a one hand effort by Harris as a flag is down. Harris stabs it with one hand. We'll check on the flag it's back at the 25. He's unguardable today. I mean really. Doesn't matter who you put on Trey Harris. 32 yard reception there. They've targeted him now 11 times and he has nine receptions. Pass interference on the defense. Number 28. And penalty is declined. Result of the play of the first down. Yeah, just a lot of contact on the outside there. Josh DeBerry working on Trey Harris. Big physical body. It's hard not to get tied up. But look at the, I mean, the catch. Are you kidding me? We got OBJ down there. Look at this catch. Oh, come on. By Harris. Come on. That is spectacular. I didn't see that the first time around. I was looking at the PI. And with that, he has 190 yards. Watch this with the right hand. Come on. Look at that. One hand stab. Trey Harris. Meanwhile, at the end of the play, Walter Nolan was down for a long time, and now he is walking off the field. Of course, Nolan was one of the most hyped freshmen in that famed number one recruiting class, that number one recruiting class that brought out the verbal barbs that kept going from that moment through this week from Lane Kiffin pointed at Jimbo Fisher. So again, no Shamar Turner. He was ejected for the flagrant personal foul. Now Walter Nolan goes out down in the red zone here. You need those big bodies. To try to slow down this Ole Miss run. First and goal after the penalty. When John Judkins, he is wrapped up at the five yard line. That was Diggs with the tackle. And the progressive pylon cam angle of that spectacular catch from Trey Harris. Come on, eye candy for you. Come on, man. That's just unfair. And the footwork. And the footwork. Down here, this is where they love using Jackson Dart's legs as well. Second and goal. Here are the legs. Quarterback draw and met at the four yard line by Chris Russell. You could tell that was either going to be a pass or a quarterback run because that running back right before the snap stepped right ahead of Jackson Dart to become a blocker. Really, that might be the first designed run for Jackson Dart it is. today. Yep. Something Lane said they were going to have to use a lot of, just haven't really needed to get into it with how much the passing attack's been rolling. It's gone for 364 yards and two touchdowns. He has so much respect for this front of AM and he said we're going to need the passing game. It's not going to be like last year where Judkins went for 205. Third and goal. Dart. Another stab by Harris, but he's out of the back of the end zone while Dart took a hit. But Trey Harris and his ability with just the right glove. This might be one of the better incomplete passes you're ever going to see. <laughs> Great throw by Jackson as he gets lit up and then that is this is un that's unbelievable. I mean, you're watching. He's already a star. We knew he was a star, but on a national stage right now, Trey Harris. Again, this is an incompletion. Let me not get too carried away. But that is. Uh, you can you can go to incompletion all you want. I know. Athletically, that was freak show right there. Same play they tried to or they ran successfully on that two point conversion as well. A and M adjusted well. And now from a seven point margin to a ten point lead, Caden Davis with the field goal. As Trey Harris put them in position. 
This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund, and we thank Allstate for that. Here at this university, with the Grove universally accepted as the premier tailgating spot in college football, it is such a beautiful weekend here in Oxford, Mississippi, Jordan. It just feels like SEC football oh. going to into town, right? Little you guys were out there this morning with SEC Nation. Oh. Massive crowd, chill in the you. air. The Grove was rocking at about 8 a.m., probably earlier. I rolled up at 8 a.m. <laughs> It's just there's not many environments like this in college football and I've been all over I'm a California kid So I grew up on right. every Pac-10 Pac-12 now stadium the Grove is a special place the Whole town's a special place. Yeah, of course famed for writers like William Faulkner and John Grisham and our colleague Wright Thompson who may be the great writer of this generation in the history of this place with James Meredith becoming the first black student admitted to the university back in 1962 who's 90 years old now the civil rights icon but what a day you've had I mean you've been out celebrating college football from first thing this morning you're on SEC Nation with the crew there right at the Grove breaking down the touch screen and having fun with the crowd well what are we doing over here not playing a little finger flick football come on now and I love what you've been doing with getting the fans and you got some of the youngsters out you know, there I, I try to get back to the game. Kids, you know, get out you of can, here. You, you cannot. You can't. <laughs> you can't. And then we said, hey, Jordan, listen, you got a double dip, man. I know you're having fun at the Grove. I'm over here doing some boxing promos. <laughs> the next thing I know, you come in like Superman saying, I'm ready to call a football game. A little out of breath. Quads were lit up a little bit from those stairs and the run from the field with about 10 minutes to kick. But it was a good morning for SEC football. Johnson. Plenty of time on first down, and he gets it complete. High pointing that ball was Walker. But how many plays is Walker going to make? Today, Walker, again, Evan Stewart not in the lineup, so they're trusting guys like Moose Muhammad and Jade Walker. Another big reception as Max Johnson trusts him. Thrown into traffic there. Two or three guys around Walker to put that in the perfect spot. And again, Rebounding from that interception earlier, trying to get this, his squad back in the game. Johnson gets it complete to Smith as he goes for nine yards. And that'll end the third quarter. Critical game for these two teams. Ole Miss with a 10 point lead. End of the third quarter. Now, take a quick timeout with DoorDash. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be in the Taco Bell Live Moss student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. I put down some Taco Bell in my college days, let me tell you that. Boy. Start of the fourth quarter. Aggies down 10. Second and two, Daniels. He will have the first down. What's going on, Matt Barry? Okay, Joe Tessitore, I'll tell you what's going on. Kansas State has made it a football game. Once down, Vic, now 27 21, and they just scored again to tie it at 27 in Austin. And will Howard with three touchdown passes against the Horns. Johnson gets it out quickly and is spinning out at the 40 yard line as Walker. Daniel straight ahead and here he goes. And the Aggies run game looking good. Boy, watch the movement up front here by this Aggie offensive line led by Bryce Foster, the center. Watch that side movement. Watch him just watch that defensive line down, and then Daniels, great one cut, got north and south. Remember, Le'Veon Moss went out with that injury. Didn't look like he's coming back, so probably going to be Daniels the rest of the way. Uh -oh. That ball's up in the air, and thankfully for the Aggies, Max Wright was on top of it. 
dangerous play here again. Sound like a broken record, but pressure on Max Johnson. This time Jared Ivey off the edge. Been a little quiet today. But Max really lucky that the other Max, Max Wright, was there to pull that one down. Second and ten. Johnson with a man right on top of them. Diving effort inside the five. But it is incomplete as Anaya Smith couldn't contain it. Man, this is one that Max would love to be able to hold on to for a second longer. But John Saunders coming hard off the edge. Johnson had to let it go a little bit earlier than he'd like. That's almost an unbelievable play in tight coverage by Anaya Smith. Yeah, I don't know. Looked like he came around with that, and that one didn't get knocked out till after he rolled. Yeah, they're going to take a look at this. On the further review, the ruling on the floor was the pass was incomplete. Remember, the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, but you be the judge here. Tremendous effort from oh. Smith. But does the ball hit the ground prior right. to firm control? Yeah, you see that tip up and down. So he definitely had control when he rolled over. But this is what we're looking for. Watch the initial catch. And then does the ball here get jarred loose? Loose. Can't see it in that angle. Well, you have to decide. Does he have firm control? It, it and looks the like it doesn't me. play a factor. Yeah. Now. The ruling on the field was incomplete, so they have to view yes, it. That, that's indisputable video evidence that would overturn it. That looks like a catch to me. Look at that. Two hands on the ball when it contacts the ground, and as he rolls, and it's not till that last movement where Dejon Anthony gets his hand in there. Again, that's the, that, that's the touch in question, but it looked like he had confirmed control to me. And then it'll be where was he, right? If it is a catch, where are they going to spot it? Well, here. After further review, the receiver completed the catch. Wow. The ball will be placed at the two yard line. First down. Anaya Smith delivers again. And that was a tremendous effort. And what we didn't get to see was Max Johnson delivering, taking a hit under pressure again with an accurate throw. Boy, he has rebounded from a slow start, rebounded from an interception mistake in the end zone, and has AM knocking on the door here. Crown over the 235 pound big back in front of Amari Daniels. Can the Aggies close into this in the fourth quarter? Quarterback straight ahead. Johnson trying to drive for. He's going to be marked down just inside the one-yard line. I wonder why on those they don't truly just get in more of the uh, the old Philadelphia Eagles type formation. Well, the tush push. Yeah. The Crownover has done that this yeah. year. Crownover has done the tush push to help with the quarterback sneak with Max Johnson. They also like to hand it to Crownover down here as well. You saw Johnson just turn yeah. to number 24. He's tight. He's really close. Sometimes they'll turn and hand it to 24. Instead, they keep it with Daniels. And Daniels says, Gig him. Big Chase Basantis was critical on that black, as was Layden Robinson. And that front for the Aggies paves the way for a touchdown, a 75 yard drive. Yeah, Basantis, usually right tackle, lined up in a fullback position. Yes. There. Led up on the defensive lineman or linebacker, paved the way. As you mentioned, Ernest Crown over as well. And how about the answer from these Aggies? They've done that a few times. Yes. Today. We got a heck of a game here in the fourth quarter. Jimbo wants it badly. Lane's been sending out those not so subtle barbs. This was the catch by Smith after Johnson took that hit. They said this was incomplete. Anaya Smith said, take another look. I'm pulling off a little magic here. 
And the Aggies have a whole lot of fight to them today. Jimbo's Aggies are right there in the fourth quarter. George with you here in Oxford. Judkins had the touchdown run to open up the second half. It was a two touchdown margin for Ole Miss. Then the Johnson brothers connected. And then moments ago, Daniels with the touchdown run. It's just a three point game. Bentley on the return. Takes it out past the 20. Katie? Tess, in recent weeks, Jimbo Fisher says Anaya Smith went back to playing football and quit worrying about everything else like he did in 2020. He said he's not trying to predetermine what's about to happen. He's allowing the game to come to him. He's seeing it well. He's reacting. Fisher says he's one of the smartest players he's ever coached. Bobby Petrino says Smith is the brains of the operation on offense. He understands everyone's role and is an extension of the coaches on the field. And my goodness, does this kid have a huge heart. He lays it all on the line for his team every single Saturday. Massive play by Anaya Smith. Back from that season-ending knee injury a year ago. And over-delivering for his team. Bentley bounces it off the right tackle and was just tripped up at the last second by Bryce Anderson. Boy, huge play by Bryce Anderson, too, because there was no one else there. No. Again, it's just amazing watching Bentley. All these runs designed to go inside, and he just skips, finds the lane outside, turns the corner. Second and six, Bentley, nothing at all. That excellent front of Texas A&M, keep in mind, without Shamar Turner, who was ejected for a flagrant foul earlier. That was LT Overton and Torian York combining on the tackle. Third down and six. Big opportunity for the Aggies defense. Dart. That is denied. Incomplete. As it was Jacoby Matthews who had the 75 yard touchdown return up the block field goal in pass coverage against Watkins. Yeah, Dart has been so accurate with these throws. This one just on the back hip, right? If that one's out in front, it gives Watkins a chance. Instead, Jacoby Matthews all over that. Boy, did that feel like a momentum play or what? And now look at this opportunity here on the punt that goes out of bounds and A&M's getting the ball only down three with under 11 minutes to play. What's going on elsewhere, Matt Perry? Jo Joe Tessitore, an update on Ohio State. We're keeping an eye on that one because it's just been uncomfortable for the Buckeyes, but you want to get your comfort food like you guys ate in Oxford? Marvin Harrison Jr., That's all you need, Buckeyes up 12. College football playoff rankings are brought to you by Allstate Jordan. Yeah, Ohio State maybe looking up at that ranking this week. A little slow start for them, but looking much like they expected. I think Oklahoma is going to be an interesting one in Bedlam, right? Sitting at nine right there. Just on the outside looking in, trying to make a statement against Oklahoma State. We want to talk about making a statement. How about the number 10 team in the country? Yeah playing pressure football right now against this Aggies bunch with a defense that came in with all the statistical accolades and has had some big moments just shut him down a moment ago but now it's the offense with Max Johnson that has to come up with something down three in the fourth quarter and a name we haven't spoken about much tonight Santaron Perkins the talented freshman linebacker out there for Ole Miss he's a pass rush specialist Second and eight, Johnson to the outside, wide open. It's a first down to Noah Thomas. So now you think about people are sitting down there at the Rough Draft Whiskey Bar and Dudley's and College Station saying, what's going on here? The offense is starting to find themselves. Yeah, and this is Perkins, right? He's a pass rush guy. Occasionally he'll get him in space just a little bit out of position there. It's not his natural position. They've been working a lot about getting his fundamentals down from that jack outside linebacker position. Talented, but better when he's rushing the passer, and AM took advantage there. Daniels was able to keep that leg, that late drive out to midfield. Remember this offense for the past month in the second half of games. They weren't scoring touchdowns. They were settling for field goals. You just feel like this is going to come down to Max Johnson either making a huge big time throw like he has numerous times tonight under pressure or Ole Miss coming up with one here in the fourth quarter. 
to flip the script. Second and six. Three man rush to the outside. Stretching is the tight end, Max Wright. That's a tremendous effort for a 260 pounder who's built like a brick wall. And the fifth year senior. Not known for this type of athletic ability. Look at that catch. 260 pounds spreading out like that to the outside. This is a Trey Harris. Hold my beer. Maybe not quite. You know, he used two hands. Trey was more of a one handed guy, but that's pretty good for 42. Owens. It's the hole, and here he goes. And now you can sort of sense you Uncle feel Mo is with AM. But how do you close? Bobby Petrino, the play caller for Texas AM, is starting to get some of that stuff on the sheet that's working for Johnson and this offensive line. And right now, in 12 personnel, so they got two tight ends. Looks like trying to give Anaya Smith a breather. He's had so much today with Evan Stewart out. The two tight ends are Johnson and Wright. They're on the right side of the formation with Owens as the lone back. And Owens trying to get to that line to gain, but was driven back at the last second that time. That was Trey Washington who leads the team in tackles. Oh, Trey Washington, a special player. I mean, Pete Golding went as far as to say that he's the reason we're seven and one. We got no chance without him. Had the one mistake in coverage today, gave up the touchdown, but he's been all over the field. And now on a third and short, let's see if this Ole Miss defensive front can bow up. High formation. Brown over with Daniels as the tailback. Third down and one. Play action off of it. Johnson selling it. But overthrows the intended target, his brother Jake. Fourth down come. Wow, what a great play call. I love the design by Bobby Petrino. Everybody in the stands thought this was going to be a run play, Ole Miss included. Johnson just gets a little held up there. Two blockers, he was bouncing off them. Boy, he had Max Wright in the flat, wide open. Here we go, fourth and one. Game on the line. Quarterback sneak there. Your tush push and mom and dad can breathe and send some high fives to that parent section. Been watching the game through Nikki's eyes. Yeah, look at this. Yep, there we go. Dad relaxed, unfazed, right? He's like, this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> Brad's got the big hands on. He's got the big headset on. Doesn't want to be distracted, doesn't want to hear. I think he's listening a little. Or no, I think that's all Chuck Man Jones right there. <laughs> that feels so good watching the sun in this drive. Johnson looking against the grain. That ball's in her soul. Price had it every which way, but instead we're going to have a flag with the contact. DeAndre Pr Prince didn't come down with it. But they're going to say there was contact as Prince was in there. Number seven on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. DeAndre Prince, the vocal leader of this defense. The pass interference call. Boy, it's the underthrown ball, right? Underthrown here. So he starts to turn, but reaches both those hands out, initiates that contact. And Dad loves that one. He's like, yep, uh huh. Lane doesn't love that one. No, it's actually a really good position by Prince. Just has the receiver slowed down. He got both those hands extended. First down. This place is roaring, trying to support their defense. Daniels off right tackle, cuts it back. Good hold down to the 10 yard line. As that cut back worked out well for Jimbo's group. Boy, that's been the difference. Amari Daniels not missing a beat with Le'Veon Moss out with the knee injury. Came into it banged up, so Daniels has been leaned on this game, and he has gotten better as the game goes on. And now six minutes, just over six minutes. A&M with a chance here to punch it in and go up. They have struggled in the second half for the last month. Not this time. Not in this spot.
Second and two. Daniels straight ahead and working his way down to the one yard line. First and goal, Giga. Boy, how about running through an arm tackle by Xavier Harris? Physicality. I mean, the run game has been the absolute game changer for AM in the second half. And the reason they didn't disappear like they have in the last four games. First and goal. He sneak it again to take the lead. He's going to sneak it. Can he get in? Johnson. Unable to sneak his way any further. But I wouldn't be in a hurry to snap this ball. Let that play clock go all the way down. I know there's still a lot of time left, but you're. You're okay as the time ticks away here. What a turnaround with this offense in the Jeez. second half. Look at the total plays in the second half. Ball control by AM. High formation with Daniels as the tailback. And you see the nose tackle for Ole Miss came through that neutral zone and made contact with Robinson. I'm discussing it here. Thought that was pretty straightforward. They probably saw something I didn't, though. Offside on the defense, made contact with the offensive lineman. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Second down. Half the distance to the goal is a matter of inches. Twelfth play of this drive coming up. A drive that is over six minutes, 66 yards. Has seen tough running and has seen big plays for Max Johnson. Clutch conversions, and now with four and a half to play in a gotta have it moment of their season against the number 10 team in the country, what do they come up with? Johnson is gonna dive in. The first lead of the game for AM. Boy, and what a gritty performance by Max Johnson all day. Taking hits, delivering passes, going airborne here to get the Aggies to take their first lead of the day. This is a game that could swing things, right? Complete You're Texas A&M. You have struggled on the road. You've lost eight straight true road games. You grab this, and it could actually be playing for a very special season at the end of the year at LSU. Meanwhile, so much on the line for postseason glory for Ole Miss. But Brad and Nikki say, attaboy, Max. The Aggies have the lead. Party to reveal the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the crew will have all that. And will we have a new top 10? The way the scoreboard reads right now, the number 10 team in the country is trailing at home. Joe Tessitore, Jordan Rogers, Katie George with you here at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium in Oxford, Mississippi. A thrilling finish here in the SEC awaits as we look at our SEC conference spotlight. Presented by T-Mobile 5G Home Internet. And here's the bottom line. Not just the SEC championship game possibly impacted today, but the college football playoff scene. No doubt. I mean, Ole Miss, you see there with a low percentage to get to the SEC championship. But we've been talking. They might have a better chance at the college football playoff not going to the SEC championship if they can turn this one around and run the table. Well, that would be a win over Georgia. You'd oh, be sitting huge. there at 11-1 and one with a win against Georgia. That's a heck of a resume, and we've seen that happen when we get two conference, two teams from the same conference before with that scenario. Jackson Dart. Man in his face, ball is free, and it falls incomplete. But Jackson Dart took a big hit that time by York. Torian York shot out of a cannon. A little late green dog here as that running back bl blocks. He blitzes. Responsible for the running back and just... Never had a chance to dart. Folks, you hear that term green dog, just think delayed blitz. Yep. But that was like a human missile on that delay. As he quickly turns the corner, Trey Harris gets loose. Trey Harris is having a sensational game. Absolutely sensational, Jordan. Over 200, 10 for 209 now. And how about the moxie and the grit of Jackson Dart after taking a hit like that? 
They spit that ball out accurately on the perimeter. Both quarterbacks have been getting lit up all day and have continued to answer the bell. Trey Harris, 200 Jeez. nine yards receiving. 209. Dart. That ball is like a punt in the air right now. And they're going to call pass interference here. They'll have to see if the ball was tipped. If the ball was tipped, it can't be pass interference. It may have come out clean, just affected by the hit. That was Javon Thomas in coverage. And he was up against Wade. Yeah, actually a little friendly fire there. You're going to see Micah Pettis, the right tackle. And Shamar Stewart on him. It's on the defense, number 14. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. He hits the helmet of his lineman. Pettis' helmet gets in the way of Dart. Boy, what a tough spot to put Javon Thomas in the true freshman there. Just trying to make a play, fight through a defender. Not sure if it got tipped or not. Listen, he, he's almost assuming the ball was told. Just the way it comes out. Comes it's, out like it's, that. it's coming out crooked in the air. He's trying to play the ball for an interception. So it's a first down for Ole Miss. As they try to retake the lead. And Judkins! Oh, Q is something, isn't he? Nine yards from Quinshawn Judkins, but it was all him. Man, the physicality of number four when he gets going downhill. And they're snapping right away. And here goes Judkins again. First down, Ole Miss trailing by four under three and a half minutes to play at home. Boy, and this is where Ole Miss wears you down with the tempo. This is where teams that aren't used to it, this defensive front for A&M, standing tall, trying to catch their breath, late to line up as you see here. Dart, play action, quick to the outside. Guess who? Trey Harris. Trey Harris with his 11th reception, 213 yards. Judkins probing, not finding much. It was Isaiah Rakes clogging up the middle in that defensive line for the Aggies. Remember, they are without one of their best players, Shamar Turner, who turned the game around with a blocked field goal that was returned for a touchdown. He was ejected for punching an offensive lineman for Ole Miss. Third down and four. And obviously four down territory here. Don't need to tell you that down four. So this could even be a run if they want to set up something short. Got to get a touchdown here. They're going to option it to Judkins with a blocker in front. Inside the 10, up in the air, and it is first and goal. Drip in the sip, folks. We got high drama in Oxford. Boy, great play design. Gonna leave Albert Regis, defensive end, unblocked. Little pitch to Quinshawn Judkins, and here they go. First and goal. Judkins driving for that goal line, and he's gonna be marked short. And you hear the boos, the cascade of boos as Isaiah Rakes is down, as is another Texas A&M defender. I believe that's LT Overton. So we'll have to pause with the frantic ending here. Ole Miss knocking on the door to take the lead when we return. In the shadow, on the doorstep, looking to punch it in at the end of this long drive. And Jimbo Fisher is going to use a timeout. What do you make of that, of using one of your timeouts where the other team is potentially about to retake the lead? Interesting. You must have not liked the personnel grouping that Ole Miss ended up coming out in. They came out with two tight ends, so maybe Texas A&M not in the right personnel group for that goal line, but wouldn't think that that would cause you to waste a timeout when you might need those, right? Minute yes. 43 left. I know you have all three, but you'd love to keep those in your pocket in case you need to put together a drive here if Ole Miss punches it in. Big story for Ole Miss on offense has been the star wide receiver, Trey Harris. Yeah, the Louisiana Tech transfer has been all over the place. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, big body receiver on the outside. Making one-on-one -on -one catch after one-on-one -on -one catch. And then, hey, Odell, it's been a while. The impact of having him healthy, having Jordan Watkins healthy, 
has paid dividends for this Ole Miss passing game today that's been looking to get back on track. Well, there's your distance between Ole Miss and the lead. Quick to the line. Judkins in the backfield. Direct snap. Judkins is in. There it is. There's the answer for Ole Miss and a great play design here. Watch Dart actually be the decoy to try to pull that edge defender out just a little bit. Get him to step out. That opens the lane there for Quinshawn Judkins. Great play design there by Charlie Weiss Jr. and Lane Kiffin. And here we go. Hayden Davis adds the extra point. He just dumps on that Aggies defense. The AM lead only lasts at two minutes and 54 seconds. Does Max Johnson have the final say? Late night on ESPN Plus is going to offer up one as well with Almeida and Lewis getting set on E Plus. Prelims get going at 6 p.m. Eastern, main card at 9 Eastern. But let me tell you, we are headed into the 12th and final round of what has been back and forth in this second half. Aggies took the lead. Rebs came right down the field and now number 10, the number 10 team in the country is trying to hold on at home. This AM offense looks very different in the second half. Yeah, the measure of a quarterback, how do you respond to adversity, especially on the road? The early interception in the end zone for Max Johnson, the frustration, all he did was answer it confidently, throws a touchdown to his brother, taking another hit downfield to Anaya Smith, a dime, a dot, and then Amari Daniels, and a QB sneak there by Max Johnson to cap it off. But the grit of this team. He had four drives to start the game for 44 yards and four punts, and then the last five drives, 362 yards and 28 points. Johnson, they pick up the pressure, but he checks down to Daniels, and Daniels will go out of bounds. Minute 33 remaining. We were just detailing the early struggles, those first four drives, but the story's the last five, but now they need one of those drives. As you see Jared Ivey, the defensive lineman for Ole Miss was reaching for his midsection at the end of that play, so they will take him off. He's a big part of their success. Huge part of their pass rush, but think about the journey for Max Johnson. Right, a guy that had to transfer, a guy that loses a job, started the season as a second string. Connor Wigman goes down, and now all on his shoulders with the AM season hanging in the balance. How does he respond here with a minute and a half left, and all they need is a field goal? Johnson with time pumps once and then goes right back to Smith right at that line to gain. That's a first down Texas A&M. He was met by Sistrom. And remember Jimbo used one of those timeouts down on the goal line for defense. So two timeouts a little over a minute here don't have to be completely rushed but there needs to be a sense of urgency. Johnson to the outside again as he gets it complete. And he goes to Walker. Uh, with those two timeouts, I think Ole Miss has got to switch things up. I think you can continue to let him just take five or six yards here. They'll do that, and they'll get right in field goal range. So see if Ole Miss either dials up a pressure or starting to tighten things up on the outside and take away that free access. Lane Kiffin looking on to his Pete Golden-led defense, trying to find a way, find a stop. Johnson on second and six, drifting back. And that ball is caught as a defender jumped it. They're saying incomplete. They're saying Walker was out of bounds as he hauled that in. Boy, falling away again for Max. Let's watch the feet. Boy, that right foot's in. That right foot looks in. Yeah, they take a look at that one. That right foot of Jade Walker right there. And that'll put them at the 50. Does he have firm control at that moment when the right foot is clearly touching the green grass? I think so. I don't see that ball move at all. As soon as it hits him right in the crease, right in the gut right there, that ball does not oscillate, doesn't move. Boom. 
Yep, right foot down. I know it happens really quick, but it only needs an instance. I think this look is outstanding. Oh, right there. That's a catch. When we talk about indisputable video evidence. Secured and foot down. And listen, I know in real time you're backpedaling, the foot is lifting off the ground, but that first look, and we'll of course give you every angle, the reverse angle here, but that first look seems like it's very solid for the crew to adjudicate David Smith, the head referee here for the SEC crew. And think about it, so that puts them at about the 50 if they do indeed agree with us. Got to get to about the 35-yard line, right? That's that target for a career long. For Randy Bond. After further review, the pass was complete. Receiver had possession and a foot down. First down, Texas A&M. Oh, what a day Jaday Walker has had. Six catches, 70 yards, filling in for trying to fill the void of Evan Stewart being out with injury, didn't play today. There is Bond, Randy Bond, the kicker. For a and with a career-long 52-yard long, 52-yarder, will he have the opportunity? Uh, will Ole Miss bring pressure? They're going to keep sitting back. They're bringing pressure here off the edge. Here it comes, off the edge and the B gap. So he drifts back, and Johnson has to throw it away. And Johnson took a big hit, being helped up by his offensive line. No, he's got to get rid of the ball quick. Nobody open, so just trying to get it out of his hands. Not give up a sack, but that was the changeup that I was saying Pete Golding needed to do, right? Playing off, giving those easy throws. Got to tighten it up, put some pressure on Max. Was Lane asking for intentional grounding there? He wasn't outside the tackle box, and there was not necessarily a receiver would be Lane's argument. 59 ticks of the clock remain. Down by three, looking for the upset. Oh, jumping that route was Trey Washington. He almost. Right in front of Jade Wall. And almost the perfect call by Golding. He's going to bring a corner cat, corner blitz right there. And Trey Washington, knowing that's the hot route, knowing that's the quick throw, almost takes that one right out of the air. But here we go. Third down, obviously four down territory for Texas A&M. They got to pick up at least a few here. Third and ten. Johnson with time drives the ball complete. It is Walker again, and it is a first down in field goal range for Texas A&M. Boy, what a great job by this offensive line. They struggled all year, but a little more pressure that time by Pete Golding. Gave Max Johnson a ton of time, and they're right in field goal range now. Ball is out! And Robinson jumps on it. Johnson didn't see what happened there, and Johnson slow to get up. And it's the first sack for Ole Miss today. Half a minute remains. And RPO here, so this is a called run play. He wants to throw either a hitch or a slant out there. Cedric Johnson providing the pressure, almost knocked that one out completely, or did knock it out, but neither receiver, what I was trying to get to on the outside, even looking. So Max trying to pick up a pass, pick up some yards. Receivers not on the same page, almost a catastrophic play. Randy Bond could have the game on his boot. So much on the line. Top 10 team in the country sitting here at 7 and 1. AM has struggled in spots like this. 29 straight when losing by 10 or more entering the fourth quarter. Eight straight losses in true road games. And this is a hostile road setting. A roaring crowd at Vaught Hemingway Stadium. A top 10 team trying to hang on at home. But the feisty Aggies are here with one last power punch. Pressure off the right side. Johnson goes downfield. And is that intercepted? Yes! Deshaun Gaddy with the play of the game for Ole Miss. Not much there for Max Johnson. A little bit of pressure on him. 
But what I say, it was either going to come down to a Max Johnson performing big time under pressure or Ole Miss taking one away. Deshaun Gaddy, a seldom used offensive back. I don't know that he oh. maintained possession there, Jordan. Did he have full control of that ball as he's striding out of bounds? Does he put this away? Oh, no, he doesn't. Splits his hands just for a second. That wow. is not an interception. They are reviewing this, and it will be shocking if we hear anything else but an overturn, and AM still has the ball. All right, so AM's going to get the ball back, I believe, if they do overturn that. Important to note, because of that fumble, it knocked them from about the 31 or so back to the 36. Remember, Randy Bond's career long is 52. They're just outside that range with 24 seconds left in one timeout. They need to pick up a few more yards if indeed they overturn that interception and AM gets the ball back. It's going to be third down when they clean things yeah. up here. Oh. After further review, the pass was incomplete. Wow. The receiver did not have possession with the body part down. It'll be third down, Texas A&M at the 36-yard line. Just when Hottie Toddy thought they were going to go get a fresh one in the Grove, we got more ball to play. We have 24 seconds, and it's still AM and ball. And Max Johnson, who was seemingly hurting at the end of that, now gets that time to recover just enough with the replay. He's taken so many hits to the chest, to the stomach, gritting through his performance today, but again, need one more big throw from him. They could run it still with the timeout, but... I'd imagine you're going to find Anaya Smith in the slot. He's been the go-to guy. See if you can't get him in space. Right there. Great review to go AM's favor, and it gives them a second chance. Ole Miss. They're... Ole Miss is going to use a timeout. Max Johnson. Boy, he's acting like a tough football player today. And it hasn't been the easiest day to do that. He's been up, down, and all around. Well, you can see him sorting through some of that pain. It looks like trying to go through a throwing motion there with Jimbo. Tell you what, having been there many times, as soon as that ball snapped, you forget about it as Max Johnson has fought through pain and big hits all night. He's got to make one more play to get them in a better field goal situation here. Again, about the 35-yard line would be that career long for their kicker, Randy Bond. One timeout remains for a and A third and 15. Safety's creeping up right to that A gap. They're coming after him, bringing everything, and he completes it. Now it's short of the line to gain, but it helps with the distance as he goes to Smith. Boy, and once again, cover zero. Pete Golding throws the blitz everybody package out there, and Max Johnson stares it down once again. And they're going to take this time out and put it all on the shoulders of Randy Bond. The young man from Plano, Texas. Junior, who came into this week leading the SEC in total field goals made with 18, number two in the nation. And that's because of some of the struggles that the AM offense had, especially in the second half of games over the past month. So he was kicking field goals while they were hoping for touchdowns. Today, they get the sevens, they do their job, and yet it still comes down to Bob. Again, this season for Texas A&M and Ole Miss teetering right now. Ole Miss, number one, number two, Georgia next week. But A&M at five and three, this could change the entire complexion of this program. Graham's the snapper, Constantino's the holder, and the pressure's on Randy Bond from 47. How do you feel about overtime? Will we have it here? 
as the timeout will be used of course by Lane Kiffin and the Reds. Moments ago we thought the game was over. The almost interceptions on this drive. Trey Washington almost had one. Gaddy almost had one. Remember the fumble that bumped him out of field goal range for a second? I mean, it has been ugly, but at the end of the day, Max Johnson got this offense within striking range of sending this to overtime and getting some bonus football here on a Saturday afternoon. Max Johnson has 31 completions for over 300 yards. Back and forth they've gone just like their coaches have done. Bond with a career long 52 yarder. This will be from 47. To tie it. And the number 10 team in the country holds on. Did somebody get a piece of that? I think they did just based on the rotation of that ball. Just enough. Ole Miss wins it in an absolute thriller.